you know, when I first came into the unit <coughs> in 73, I came in as a volunteer, and ultimately I became a substance abuse counselor for them. And uh, at that time, I became the substance abuse counselor for Westchester Division. But we were able to move in other, other divisions, such as Manhattan uh, Power Generates for Con Ed, because we were a Con Ed counselor. But we had specific areas that we were located in, but we could be moved back and forth to other areas when necessary if the council wasn't available. So we were mobile that way, and we come under, under medical department, but working for the division. And so what happens is that once you become a counselor, uh, and the program is set up as such, they had a, a procedure that they followed in a medical department identifying early stages of alcoholism. And the supervisors are the ones that are responsible for identifying them. It's usually problems, uh, absenteeism, coming back late from work, uh, lunch, et cetera, under the influence, et cetera, et cetera. These are telltale signs of, of, of alcoholism, early stages. When we first got in, we always got the late stages, uh, meaning that the, uh, the poor guy was hidden for such a period of time and he's, uh, he needs a detoxification. At that time, we used to use Freeport Hospital in the early 70s. And what occurred was that by the time we got these people out there, there was a, uh, there were, there were li actually life, uh, threatening, uh, situations. In fact, what we used to do is we used to always have to carry a pint of booze underneath the seat. So in case you have somebody going out to detox, at least you give him a couple of drinks so that he's not going to convulse in the middle of, the, of your trip out to the uh, out to the detox unit. So in essence, uh, we're, we're doing that to, to save somebody's life. But as we begin to go into the fellowship, uh, go into the counseling session, we were able to identify them earlier. And so what usually happens is as the experimental goes, you, you really didn't know, uh, you know, what the situation was with the individual. And so experimenting with these things, we used to get one shot, detox, go to AA in early stages of, uh, late stages of alcoholism. The guy usually made well, okay? Uh, but every once in a while you get a relapse. Now what are you going to do? You had to make a decision. What are you going to keep the guy, et cetera, et cetera. So what they developed was a, a three-stage program, meaning um, two stages. Uh, that, that will help you twice, and the third, that will release you. Um, and the New York City Police Department did the same thing. So we began to, to do that. We used Brunswick Hospital. Okay, what happens is that, you know, industry uh, can't afford constant uh, repetitive uh, uh, treatment programs for these individuals. They have to give up on some time because the fact is that, hey, uh, otherwise they're just supporting and enabling somebody. Uh, so what happens is you have to have a threat of... Uh, of termination. If you don't terminate, then <laughs> I mean, it, it'd be no good. Uh, so what occurred is that we tried the, the, the three strat deal, and it seemed to work. Usually, what happens when somebody's identified as a problem, and you can you can readily identify them by your eyes by just say, hey, he he's lost work, uh, he's uh, divorced, he, he you know because of his drinking, et cetera, et cetera. At that time, these signs are identified, and the doc medical doctor down in uh, Brooklyn used to identify that as, as an illness, and he's, he goes out as a, um, he goes, he's identified as an alcoholic. And so at that time, then he's got to do what we need to do. Uh, what we have set up is, is an inpatient program. Um, we used to be with Brunswick Hospital. Uh, at the same time, uh, uh, there was medical coverage for that, but the, there was no medical coverage for rehab. And so what we used to do is we used to use uh, Jim Cusack, who opened the facility up there in uh, in uh, Monticello, uh, Veritas Villa. And it used to be a minimum amount of money. I don't know, I forget the $125 a week or whatever, but it was back in the 70s, which was a lot of money at that time. But uh, at the same time, we used to send them up there for two weeks, et cetera, uh, for 28 days, depending uh, on what would have happened. And the reason for this is the fact is that we identify this is a relapsable disease meaning that uh, there's no no cure for this. And so if a certain per person is doing certain things, he's going to relapse and, and he's going to drink again. And so what we did, we established a, a program, a three-stage program. Uh, first, they're mandated, mandated to go into a treatment program, sometimes for 14 days. Uh, and then the next program would be 28 days, and the city, the company would pay for it, but they would be reimbursed from payroll deduction from the individual for the, the month's stay up at Veritas Villa. And then after that, they would need to go to AA meetings. And what was established with Brunswick Hospital was that they had to have it go to an aftercare program, meaning that uh, they're monitored uh, when they come out of the Veritas Villa to go to the one night a week uh, program that they had in the city. 
And basically what happens is hopefully they will be uh, active members in AA by the time they leave that program, six-month six program. Uh, if they're not and they relapse, the reason for that is that when somebody's identified early on, the most important part of time is that the person doesn't think he's got a problem. He'll deny the fact that he has a problem. It'll go through the treatment program, and he'll agree that, that he's got to do these things, and he's well motivated when he leaves there. But he still thinks he, does, he doesn't have a serious problem because it really hasn't cost him very much at this time. Uh, so what happens is that he says, maybe I can, maybe I can. And what happens is that they wind up uh, going out and, and experimenting, and then they, 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 they relapse, and they wind up going on a bench. And when they go back to treatment the second time, usually the first stage, the first time they're in treatment, it's a very low percentage of, of recovery, maybe 14, 15 percent of people who go wind up uh, having to go back, uh, maybe, maybe go to AA and, and get well. But some second time that the person goes into treatment and uh, their job is real seriously in jeopardy, they have to seriously look at their job. They have to seriously look at their addiction. And at that time, uh, the recovery rate at that point is pretty high because at that time they're, they're taking their recovery serious and they need to do some things uh, for it and then that they follow through. But there's a small percentage of, of those people uh, during this time uh, will lose their job. And uh, what happened after a period of years, uh, especially with the police department then uh, the, the Con Ed, what happened was they were able to uh, track these people because when they went out in Con Ed, they went out as disability. So they were given disability checks. And so when they began to research the people who were released because of alcoholism, uh, the research not only for Con Ed but also for the police department was that life expectancy was 18 months, which is, which is pretty high. And so what happened was that they decided they're going to give them a third shot. If they can prove uh, a year of sobriety, then the possibility of them returning to work was there. What happens is that the control is taken off their drinking and they wind up going dying very quickly. Uh, most people, because of uh, their alcoholism, um, you know, I can't be alcoholic because I have a job. <laughs> you know, when that's taken away, you know, there's no control and then what happens is they go right off down the tubes very quickly and 18 months they're, they're the probability that unless, unless they get well. So what they did was they began that uh, third phase if they can stay sober for a year, and at that point they can come back, they can, the, the reverse of that can come back. So you're giving the person a, a motivation to live. Uh, there have been people that come back that way, but generally speaking, if, if they're given that opportunity to get well, uh, the control is still there, and they will go to AA, and they will we'll do it. And in many cases, some of these guys who left got better jobs <laughs> because they had the motivation of coming back. But meantime, they during that year, yeah, these are kind of guys. Uh, they got better job because what happens is they were going to attempt to come back uh, to Con, Con Ed, uh, reverse that thing. But while they were out for that year, uh, they were going to meetings, they're doing things, and they got another job and probably a better paying job. 